Welcome back to River Chat, folks. You know, this February the 2nd, I believe Tuesday, is World Wetlands Day, and I'm pleased to have with me uh, Katie uh, Braystead, and Katie and I are, are, are old friends, and she is a woman who, along with a uh, board, have been developing the Woodlands Trail and Park right there next door to the elementary school. And this is a project that's been going on for years and years. There are a couple of things that are going on here. One is she had um, Dave McNamara do a documentary, which we're going to be able to air this week. The other thing is we want to talk to Katie because World Wetlands Day is not something that we really celebrate enough and take the time to appreciate what what that whole idea is about. And Katie, before we get to your documentary, tell us about World Wetlands Day and how we as individuals can benefit from acknowledging it. Well, God, World Wetlands Day started back in 1971 when the United Nations passed um, a resolution to start bringing more attention on February 2nd of each year to World Wetlands Day. And it's important for us to recognize any of those days that deal with wetlands because of the massive issues that we're facing in Louisiana with our dwindling coastline and the conversion of, you know, wetland, inner wetland forests to, um, to development or agriculture. And it's important for us to sort of see that we balance that. You know, uh, you get a chance to walk through Woodlands Trail and Park, and you can appreciate it on a personal level, the quiet, the beauty, the uh, all the things that you can appreciate when you're just taking a walk through the park. But it really has uh, a lot of meaning to the whole ecosystem of really the whole United States, or you might even say larger. It starts with trees, it, it migrates to birds and other animals. A little bit about uh, uh, how that is included in, in World Wetlands Day. Okay. Uh, the theme this year for World Wetlands Day, which is a, really a good reason for us to be talking about it this year, is the theme this year is forests and wetlands and how um, freshwater wetlands, how they benefit the community and just some of those issues are the fact that it absorbs stormwater runoff sure. which is a basically it serves as a natural sponge which in dollars and cents has a huge impact on a community in terms of uh, drainage dollars that are not spent uh, it also serves as a wind buffer to protect the community in times of storms and it also affects the um, the air quality and the water quality because of the carbon absorption those trees provide for the community and then also as you were talking about it's it's fun to walk in the woods and part of that being fun not only is exercise but part of that is what you see and the woodlands habitat there is a it's a large area that provides habitat for not only wildlife, but for migratory birds. And that, for this area, is really critically important now that we had the, the well blowout and oil spill, which affected thousands. I mean, and we don't know even truly how long that will affect the migratory bird habitat in our country. And you can just, just in looking at the data, Woodlands Trail Park provides habitat for thousands of migratory birds and many of those that were affected by the oil spill. You know, it's also, well, it, it makes it perfect that we're here today to talk a minute about the documentary that you produced. And it's sort of unfortunate that its timeliness was met with this oil spill. Uh, but as unfortunate as that is, it should have generated some additional interest. And for those of you that haven't had a chance to see it on WYES, uh, Channel 10 is going to be airing it at 7 o'clock on uh, Tuesday, February the 2nd. Uh, you had the top-of-the-line guy, Dave McNamara, produce it for you. What's the, the name and, and what's the overall theme? The name of the uh, documentary is Woodlands Trail and Park Struggle to Survive, 
And it's a 30-minute documentary that was uh, produced to show the effects of Hurricane Katrina, what that did to that environment, and the efforts over the years to restore that habitat for wildlife and migratory birds, and just sort of uh, reviewing some of those issues that, that relate to the community as far as how that area, that coastal forest, is important to us. You know, um, and, and, and Dave didn't just uh, stay locally. He went and talked to experts uh, all around, and there were a couple of pieces that I just want to tease you folks with right, right now. The first was the concept of what does the canopy, the tree canopy, actually uh, mean? And uh, you had an expert who I thought had... Uh, put uh, just a few of his words we'll show you uh, right now and then come back and get your comment on it. In 2005, the woodlands forest did what it was supposed to do. Its tall trees were pounded by the winds of hurricanes Katrina and Rita. The forest buffered the winds and protected homes and buildings from more severe damage. But the trees of woodlands trail and park were punished by those hurricanes. Okay, Katie, uh, that last picture of the devastation of Woodlands Trail really says it all as to what can happen uh, uh, and how much work needs to be done in it to bring it back. Well, Guy, I think what it, what it shows when you see some of those images from NOAA and you see how much devastation there was, um, and then you think about the surrounding community, like the English Turn area, the Upper Bell Chase area. Basically, that forest took the hit for that community in many ways. Um, and we were all very lucky that we had that forest there to protect us. And I think it sort of brings home the fact that the importance of restoring that uh, forest to being a native habitat and bringing back that protection it provides for the community. And of course it does as well, and all of the hunters, but as well as just the plain old you and I, appreciate the opportunity to see the birds as they migrate back and forth each year. There were some interesting comments that I thought put well the effect that the forest has on the migratory system. And uh, we wanted you to take a, a minute just to look at that, and we'll get Katie's comment the height of spring migration across the Gulf. Uh, as many as 20 million birds can cross the Gulf in one day. Uh, that's based on, on studies with radar and uh, uh, other, other methods of detecting the birds. So when they get here, especially in the spring, uh, if they encounter adverse weather, then they need a place to stop and rest and refuel to get food. And so these coastal forests or these forests that are near the coast are incredibly important. Well, Katie, I, you know, I, it just makes perfect sense. And you think about the Woodlands Trail is 500 acres. You could describe it as a little larger, maybe a little less, but um, uh, it's important, isn't it? It's very important, Guy. Uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service tells us that not only is it great habitat for those migratory birds that were impacted by that oil spill, but it also, in the next century, with our current wetland rate of wetland loss will likely be the one, if not the only, land, coastal forested landmass between open Gulf water and the city of New Orleans within the next century. Well, let's hope that we're going to be able to take the conservation steps to not only revitalize Woodlands Trail. And folks, this is ours. This is for all of us to share. It's open seven days a week. It's free to the public. Try to get involved. It's easy to participate and help from time to time. Uh, the Woodlands Trail has a good website that I think you can benefit from uh, checking out. And Tuesday, February the 2nd, right here on Channel 10, we hope you'll uh, take the time at 7 p.m. to watch the Woodlands Trail and Park struggles to survive. And if there's anyone out there watching who wants to get more involved, we are always looking for more people to get involved in, on committees or to get involved with the board, so please contact us. We'd love to have you. All right, folks, more River Chat coming your way.